Hey everyone. All right, so I tried streaming my webinar. Oh, I tried doing a fancy presentation of it and this platform just like did not like me. It's a fairly new platform. I use it for all my other Facebook Lives, but it doesn't seem, it doesn't, they don't have the like screen share narrowed down yet. All right, so I'm just gonna do it entirely live like this and then I'll record another one with the actual presentation slides so you guys can see you know, it's kind of easier to take in lives that way when they get too long. All right, but anyways, let's get back to this. So I'm just gonna go from where I was when the presentation ended, and I'm gonna start off right from there. All right, so I was getting to the four steps of getting you from a place of like, eh, kind of crappy mindset with money to then into a place of an abundant money mindset. So we're gonna walk through four steps. Okay, so step number one, do you have a poverty and scarcity mindset? I'm gonna go through and ask you some questions about that. Step number two, creating an abundant money mindset. Step number three, giving money a purpose, okay? And step number four, how to create low and high-end offers. All right, so if you're watching this brand new version of it, <laughs> um, go ahead and type in the box. Um, tell me who's here. I think Elizabeth is here, maybe we have someone else. Tell me your name and your business, and I'm gonna get right into it. All right, guys, okay. So, let's jump into a poverty and scarcity mindset, all right? So when we are in a poverty and a scarcity mindset, which I think a majority of people are, especially when you start a business, um, or especially when you're growing a business, it's typically like, I worry, oh hey, Classy's here, yes, I know Classy. Um, so typically when you are in a poverty and the scarcity mindset, you worry about that if you raise your prices that you'll lose clients. A lot of people have that fear. So do you have that fear? Type in the comments. Even if you're watching the replay, type in the comments and let me know, do you have a fear that if you raise your prices, you'll lose clients? Do you feel like there is a limited amount of money out there for you in some way. Now this is a weird question that I think some people will be a little bit confused by, but a lot of us have a set amount of money that we think we deserve, okay? So a lot of people have this idea that there's only a set amount of money that I can kind of take or that I can kind of have in the world. And that might feel kind of weird to think about, but if you have, Right, so if you have, so Elizabeth has lost a lot of clients by raising her prices and Classy does not feel that fear at all. So we all have different fears around money, this is good guys. But if you feel like there's a limited amount of money out there in the world for you, it typically is like, okay, if I say to you, you know, well like, what if you wanted to become a millionaire? What if you want to make $100,000, something like that? You typically kind of feel like, no, I'm, I'm set. You have a money temperature inside, okay? So everyone has a money temperature that is set to a certain amount of money. No, that's, this is true, all right? And so you have set that money, and it, it could have been set by either how much your parents made, what you made in your last corporate job, um, how much money you've ever made in your life before, something like that. So you have a set amount of money within you that is set to only make a certain amount of money. Do any of you guys feel like you know what that amount is? I'll be honest with you. I had a set amount of money inside of me that was set to $30,000. No joke. It was like, Breaking beyond $30,000 was pulling teeth for me, which was so ridiculous. But because my last corporate job, I mean, it was, I was like 24 when I got it, but it was $32,000 per year. That was my salary, which is, I know it's like nothing. But to me, I had kind of set that standard. I also grew up in a home where um, my mom was a single mother, and I don't think my mom ever made above $35,000 a year. So I set myself to a standard of only making that amount of money. Even if I had large amounts of money come at me, I would maybe spend the money, I would maybe not go beyond the 30, I would always just keep myself at that $30,000 that I had set. So, do you guys, I'm gonna type it in the comments, do you have a certain amount of money? You don't have to share it. I know money is a sensitive topic for a lot of people, you can just say yes or no. Do you have a certain amount of money you 
set yourself up for. Okay. Now, do you worry that you also have to over deliver if you raise your prices? If you're raising your prices in your business, do you feel like, well, because now I'm charging this much, I have to give them this and this and this. Maybe you don't even know you're doing it. Maybe you just feel like, well, since I'm asking for this much more money now, um, I really have to give them, you know, 500 images more. <laughs> I have to, for you guys that are photographers, I have to give them like 30 more things included with it. So technically when you're raising your prices, you're still just amping up how much you're working, right? <laughs> so go ahead and answer that question in the comments too. Um, do you worry that you have to over deliver if you raise your prices? And you can answer that in the comments. Even if you're watching the replay, answer it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you, okay? All right, so when we are in this place, of this, you know, of, of me saying that I had my, my like money temperature set to $30,000. I um, had this kind of idea that there was a limited amount of money in the world for me to take, right? And it's the idea that the poverty and the scarcity mindset can come from anywhere, right? And it, and it's us saying that there's only a certain amount of money out there in the world for me. There's only a certain amount of money out there in the world that I can take. But Think about the millionaires and the billionaires of the world, right? Even think, even think about someone who is a six or seven figure person in your industry doing your job right now, right? So they just have an, an unlimited amount of money kind of flowing to them, right? Like they have lots of money coming to them while you might be only raking in like 50 or 60. And it's like, well, why not you? When you can see someone who is making six, seven billion or whatever it is, all right? Um, when you see them making that amount of money, that person in your industry, what it's saying is that that amount of money is also possible for you to make. Now, I know you guys are both photographers. So both of you, I'm sure, know of someone, you don't have to know them personally, know of someone in the world that is making six figures as a photographer, that is making seven figures as a photographer. So what that is saying to you, it, it is totally possible for you to. It is totally possible for you to make that amount of money, all right? Another way to think about it and step into an abundant kind of mindset is to think about there's always money moving around in the world. Right now, someone is paying the rent, someone's buying a coffee, someone's doing this, someone's purchasing this, and so there's just, Lots of money always moving around. Let's just get it to move to us now, right? <laughs> now we just want it to move. Let's get it to move to us now. That's all it is, all right? All right, good. So Cassie says, I feel that I can make a, a limitless amount of money, but I make goals as to what to reach for. And once I reach it, I move up the ceiling. Well, that's good. That's good, Classy. You're just breaking it in here. <laughs> All right, so there is an abundant amount of money out there for you, waiting for you to claim it as your own, but what you have to start changing, so Classy has a pretty healthy um, thoughts and habits and beliefs around money, um, but if you want to make more money, no matter where you are, whether you are making six figures and you want to get to seven, whether you're a seven-figure person, you're a millionaire and you want to become a billionaire, you have to change your thoughts and your habits and your beliefs around money first in order for you to step up and claim that amount of money that you want, right? So let's talk about where did your thoughts come from that you have right now around money, around making a certain type of money, okay? So Elizabeth set a goal for this year, but she knows there's more money out there for her. So what I want you guys to think about right now is this: these thoughts and these beliefs that you're having around money, whether they're positive or negative, where do you think your thoughts about money came from? Have you ever thought about that? Lots of us come up, so there's typically just certain amounts of places where our thoughts about money come from. Um, typically, they come from our parents. Um, they come from society. Uh, they come from, you could have had a traumatic experience with someone. Maybe you met someone who was rich and it was a really bad experience. So you could have, from that experience, um, had like a bad, then just a bad belief kind of established about people who make a lot of money. Say, you know, you say you met this rich person and, and kind of with them, it was like, 
uh, you just didn't have a good experience. So then from that experience, you then walk away saying, well, rich people are jerks or something like that, right? Um, sometimes you also, a lot of us, most of us, get our thoughts and our beliefs around money from our parents. So seeing our parents maybe fight around money, um, seeing our parents kind of say there's never enough or like if your mom, you know, if you had to ask your mom for money for something or ask your dad for money and, and they were always really stressed around giving you money or if you ever would watch the way your parents would interact around money and you kind of took those beliefs and those thoughts as your own and that happens all the time with people that happens it might be how you know if you have kids right now you might be setting them up for thoughts and beliefs around money too it's just kind of what we learn and we pass on and when you're not really aware of how you're talking about money how you're thinking about money how you feel about money when you're not totally aware of that all the time it just you can kind of just like take on thoughts that are not your own, okay? All right, so answer this question for me, guys. Um, Classy and Elizabeth, where did your thoughts about money come from? Who, who do you think you got your thoughts from? Or was it like, um, I always watch these, even, I watch these like cheesy Hallmark movies sometimes. I only watch them in, in the Christmas time, all right? But in all of those movies, if this is true for all the big movies too in the theaters. The person who is the villain is always super rich. And then like the person who's like the like good person of the movie is always like a like regular worker bee or something. And I'm always like, why is the rich person always terrible? Like why does society think that, right? All right, so go ahead and write in the comments even if you're watching the replay. Okay, I'm gonna get into step number two because we've gotten really clear around you know, maybe the thoughts that we're having around money and where our thoughts are coming from. And we have to change our thoughts and our habits and our beliefs around money in order to start creating more money. So step number two, we're gonna create an abundant money mindset, okay? So um, there is an abundance of money out there for you, waiting for you to claim it as your own, okay? And I've talked about this already. You have to change your thoughts, your habits, your beliefs. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep saying it over and over and over until you guys fucking get it, okay? <laughs> All right, so answer this question for me. I would love to be rich, but I would love to be rich. Write it in the comments. I would love to be rich, but and tell me what comes after that statement for you. Okay, so Classy is talking about her kind of where her thoughts and her habits came from. Um, you had to be financially aware at a young age. That's, I mean, that's some ways that's kind of it's sad that you did, but it's also like if it made you have a great relationship with money today, then that's incredible. That's amazing, right? Um, so yes, yeah, so guys, I would love to be rich, but, and what comes after that but is some really, really, really good stuff, all right? I'm gonna wait for you guys to answer that. I wish I could I put together all these pretty slides and nobody can see them. <laughs> I can't believe this. All right, uh, Taylor's on. Hey Taylor, I would love to be rich, but I'm afraid clients won't value my work and pay for it. That's a big one. That's a big one we come up against a lot. I'd love to be rich, but I don't see that happening. Ooh, that's like a very general one. I kind of like that though, Elizabeth. Okay, so anytime Whatever comes after that but is exactly the beliefs and the thoughts that you are feeding into. You might even be finding ways for this thing to be true. So you might even be seeing all these ways that this thing is actually true. Like it's true that I can't be rich because, you know, like look, like clients won't pay for this or clients won't value that. Um, and Elizabeth says, I'd love to be rich but I don't see that happening. Classy says, I'd love to be rich, but I don't know how to reach my target audience or how to get there. Okay, perfect, perfect guys. Do you know how powerful this actually is? Okay, so actually seeing what we are telling ourselves within our head of why we can't be rich. Now, to flip the script on this, right? So Taylor says, I'd love to be rich, but I'm afraid clients won't value my work and pay for it. So what I would say to Taylor is, well, Taylor, do you know anybody who does your job that you want to do who makes that kind of money, right? Do you know someone who pays the amount of money that you want to charge for your work? And I'm sure you can list at least one person. You don't have to know them personally, but I'm sure you can list at least one person who charges what you want to charge 
and pays for and gets clients that pays it, okay? And so Elizabeth says, I'd love to be rich, but I don't see that happening. So for Elizabeth, it's like she can't even, you can't even visualize, you can't even see yourself being rich at all. Like is rich just not on your radar? Maybe for you, rich is, is too far. So for you, Elizabeth, it could be, I'd love to, you know, maybe you have a desired amount of income that you want to make. So say it's like $50,000 or $60,000. Maybe rich is too far for you to even think of that concept yet. So I would ask you, Elizabeth, um, you know, you'd love to make 50 or 60, whatever that amount looks like that looks attainable for you. But, and then tell me what comes after that. And Classy says, I don't know, I'd love to be rich, but I don't know how to reach my target audience or how to get there, okay? All right, so for that one, um, I'd love to be rich, but I don't know. So I, then I would say to you, okay, Classy, well, is there, I'm trying to think about how to flip this one. I don't know how to reach my target audience or how to get there. Okay, so it would be like, well, are there like many ways you can learn how to reach your target audience? or how to get them to book you, there's probably like thousands of ways to learn, right? How to actually reach your target audience when it comes to your photography business. So Taylor says, yep, wedding and portrait photography. So there are lots, yes. So it's so anybody who is making the money you wanna make doing the work you wanna do is saying, hello, hello, you could make this money too. Like That's the great thing about people who have led the way in our, you know, in our place, right? Okay, Elizabeth says, I feel like making that much, oh, Elizabeth, you, you beat me to the punch. You beat me to the punch of this is the number one, number one, what Elizabeth just said in the comments. This, guys, this is the number one thing holding women back from making a lot of money because we believe, which I'm getting into, we believe, okay, that if we make a lot of money, listen to this one very closely, if we make a lot of money, every single one of my clients has said this, if we make a lot of money, it will take away from my family and my friends. I will be a bad wife. I will be a bad mom. Um, I will not be able to care for my family if I'm making a lot of money. Always, 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 always comes up for my clients every single time. So as women, we've been programmed <laughs> to believe this idea that being a working mom or being a mom who works a lot, or not even just a mom, uh, being a wife, being a girlfriend, being someone who takes care of a home. If we work a lot, that means our family and our friends and everybody else has to sacrifice. But guys, making a lot of money will mean more resources for your family, right? And you can even think of it this way. If Elizabeth was to make a lot of money in her business, um, one, that means she can probably hire a cleaning lady so she can actually spend more time with her family because she's not cleaning her home. Two, she can probably take her family on vacations more, which I bet they want to do, but maybe the extra funds aren't around. So what does that mean? More time with your family. And then three, you can hire people if you're making a lot of money to then work for you and you reap the benefits, which means more time with your family, right? And it's so, so, I see this one so much, and it's kind of just this backward, backwards kind of thoughts in, in women's head. And, and I think it really comes from that we feel like we cannot sacrifice like our family and our friends. But if we make more money, it means more for our children. It means more for our families, more for our husbands. It actually means more time with your family than, than the struggle you're in right now, all right? Okay, I gotta get off this one because we gotta get on to step number two, but oh, that it is my most passionate topic to talk about with women. Okay, so changing your beliefs around money. So this is exactly like Elizabeth said, the beliefs that she has, the belief that Taylor has that no one will pay her prices, all right? It is the ultimate step to mastering your relationship with money really seriously uncovering those weird beliefs that you didn't know you had is it is the number one way to start having a better relationship with money okay so here's a little bit I'm gonna tell you guys a couple two little stories well they're like big stories but it's a way to show you guys how much money is out there waiting for you just to create and grab all right so believing you can create money is a good belief to start off with believing people will pay you so Taylor, if you're struggling with that one, I got some stories for you guys. And then believing in your ability to make large amounts of money. 
Okay, so when it comes to believing people will pay you for your work, all right? This is one a lot of people struggle with. I'm scared to raise my prices because I don't believe people will pay it. Now, I have two stories about people paying a shit ton of money for stuff that I would never think anybody would ever <laughs> pay this much for, right? So the first story that I have is that um, the second year when I owned my floral design business, I had a girl come to me and she paid $10,000 for flowers, $10,000 for flowers at her wedding. She really valued and loved and wanted those flowers. Flowers are things that you throw away the next day. <laughs> like you, but those were, they were all fresh and we all just threw them away the next day. But she valued flowers, she really wanted flowers, so she paid $10,000 for flowers. Okay, just think about that for a second. I've had a client who paid me $10,000 for flowers. And you guys are worried about someone paying you, what, maybe like two or three grand for pictures that they can keep for life, right? Now here's another story. So I sold that floral design business. And when I sold that business, I sold a website and a brand. And that's pretty much what I sold, okay? So just, just a website and a brand and some reviews. I think I maybe had a couple mason jars and flower scissors. That was all I had to sell. I had nothing else left to sell but just a website. And I said, whatever, let's see if this will work. So asked for 10 grand, got 10 grand for a website. A website. So it took me like two years. A web, like a website. So people have the money to pay you. You just actually have to believe that people will pay you and stand and own the value of your work. All right? So those are just some fun stories I want you guys to know. Now tell me in the comments, what's one thing you are deciding to be done with about money? Okay? I'm going to write this in the comments. What's one thing you are deciding to be done with about money. Okay? One thing you want to claim today that you're deciding to be done with. Okay? And I think this is a good one. I think we always need to make that firm decision of I'm done with this belief, I'm done with this thought, I'm done with thinking this thing. I'm for, and, and something about declaring it out loud, even writing it down, just feels more of like, no, I'm really done. No, I'm, I'm seriously really done with this. Though. <laughs> and declaring it out loud makes a big difference for how you go about the rest of your day, the rest of your week, the rest of the month. It's like, oh, no, I decided I was done with doing that. This is a big one. It's powerful, too. So go ahead and tell me, what's one thing you are deciding to be done with? about money. Okay. I am taking questions and answers at the end too, guys, but I would love to know what's one thing you're deciding to be done with about money and while I'm waiting for those to come in I'm gonna ask a really dangerous question the next question is gonna be super scary I don't know who will actually answer this one so it's really exciting to see. but in the next so step number three is giving money a purpose and giving money a purpose or giving money a direction is um, really exciting but also scary at the same time <laughs> all right so Taylor said she is done with the fear of others not wanting to pay that is super powerful Taylor so excited I'm excited that you have declared you're done with that fear that's awesome that's so exciting all right cool okay now the next question I'm gonna ask is super personal <laughs> it's really personal who here if, even if you're watching the replay who here knows their exact account balance who here knows their exact bank account balance right now I will tell you guys I definitely did not like a couple of them wanted to start tracking my money a couple months ago if you asked me in February no no I no clue no clue what my bank account balance would be I'd be like eh, it's probably around this much but now I know to the penny exactly how much money I have in my personal account in my business account and any of my other 
investments that I've made, I know the exact amount of how much I have. So who here knows their exact account balance? Don't know the exact amount. Yep. Thank you for sharing, Elizabeth. I know that's kind of probably scary to share that we, because um, there's a lot of shame and guilt and fear in our society around money, which is why I think most of us are screwed up with managing it. Because there's always like, if you don't know how to manage money, you're like an idiot. And it's like, oh, but no one taught me. <laughs> no one taught me how to manage money. So now I'm here like trying to figure it out. And then there's a lot of shame if you don't know how to manage money. So I really want to like strip that away. All right. Okay. So I definitely didn't know my exact account balance either um, in February was when I started actually using this tool I'm going to talk about right now. And it has helped me stay so on top of every single dollar that I have that it's, it's been amazing. So I didn't even know when I was first doing this, I didn't even know how much money I had made that month. I would always kind of estimate and I really was making a lot more money than I thought. Okay, but I would always kind of estimate how much money I was making. I used to have no idea where my money was even going. I would just look at my account balance and spend it till it was gone, till the next time I got paid. I had a vague idea of like bills, and I'm talking like down to the penny. Like I was always like, you know, oh, it's probably like around this much or around that much. Um, and what I really was telling myself about money was that yes, of course I wanted it, but I wasn't really respecting money. So if the money would come in, I wouldn't really track it. I wouldn't really give direction to it. I would just kind of just spend it till it was gone and then I would end up at the same amount of money every single time all right um and so like having even having more than enough money sometimes felt uncomfortable and so I would just spend it if I came into a big chunk of money I would just spend it um I never kept track of my money it was always just coming in going out and paying my bills or whatever so the real question was, how could I create more money if I was just spending it all, if I wasn't giving it direction to grow, and if I wasn't asking myself, is this the best use of my money, okay? So I started using this new tool, and it is called You Need a Budget. <laughs> and it has a great name because you can never forget that name. I'm just going to write the actual address to it in the comments. You Need a Budget has entirely and totally changed my life and the way I feel about money. What I had to do first though, before I mastered giving money direction and purpose was I had to have established an abundant mindset. I had to establish positive beliefs around money before I could then go in and actually start tracking my money. Cause I used to try to use trackers all the time. I used to try to use Excel spreadsheets. Um, I used to try to do a whole bunch of wacky ways. I used mint for a while, but I would never stay consistent with anything. No, I try it, I kind of be on it, kind of be here, but it wasn't very serious. And first what I had to do was I actually had to start realizing my habits, my thoughts, and my beliefs around money first, and then I started using this finance tool to actually start having a better like relationship with money. So now all the money that I have come in, I check my money in my bank accounts every single day. I know exactly where my money is going and how it's working for me since using You Need a Budget. It's incredible, okay? <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna do, that was like a really short lesson that I wanted to do on You Need a Budget because it's freaking incredible, it's amazing. Um, everybody should be using it, but I also know that you need to establish first, have positive thoughts and, have, and beliefs around money first, all right? Now, now I'm getting into the businessy side. This is step number four, the very last step. We have one more, one more step, and then we're gonna get to the Q&A at the end, all right? So step number four, how to create massive amounts of income. <laughs> this is so sexy, isn't it? <laughs> how to create massive amounts of income, and I'm gonna write the equation for you guys right here in the comments, okay? So in order to create massive amounts of income, you need to have lots of ways for people to work with you or lots of things you're selling. Plus, you need to be selling a lot and that will give you massive amounts of income. So when you have lots of ways for people to work with you, when you have lots of things you're creating and you're selling and then, and plus, then you're selling a lot to a targeted audience that you've built up, that is how you create massive amounts of income. So 
Um, Taylor, I don't think I know what Taylor does. Taylor, I think you might be, oh yeah, you're a photographer. All right. So if you're a photographer, Elizabeth is a photographer. So you guys probably have what maybe like all of your packages I'm guessing are all high end. Would that be right? Go ahead and type in the comments. So I'm guessing all of your packages are above either a thousand dollars. Like, um, uh, maybe this would be a better way to phrase it. What's the cheapest way or the lowest way? Like what's your lowest package you guys have? Might be like family sessions or something like that. But what I'm looking for is like, what's like, yeah, what kind of package is your lowest package that you have? So what I'm going to talk about is how high end and low end offers are how you can create lots of money. You can create lots of money through high end and low end offers. And they don't have to be what I find is that most of my clients um, aren't like most of my clients aren't just photographers. You guys might be, and that's totally cool. But a lot of my clients who are photographers are photographers and they teach photography workshops. They're photographers and they teach something else. All right. So Elizabeth told me her mini sessions are 175. A wedding is 1450. Okay. Those are my cheapest. All right. Good. Okay. So senior sessions are Taylor's cheapest. All right. Awesome. So you guys don't have anything to offer below, typically, I'm just gonna give a roundabout answer, typically below, you guys don't have anything to offer below $100 or below typically 200, something like that, right? Okay, so when we talk about creating different ways for people to work with you, there's high-end offers, which should be a lot of your time, and low-end offers. Now, low-end offers, okay, when I'm talking about low-end offers, they should usually be a small amount of your time or, or, okay, they should be something that is, it's, it's kind of like, it's something that's scalable or evergreen. So what I mean by that is I mean having something that you sell, okay, having something you guys sell that is something that you continually sell over and over again without having to put in as much time. So that's something like a passive course. Um, a workbook or something like that. And you guys might be thinking, Shannon, I don't I don't sell workbooks or anything like that. No, I might be getting it wrong. If you guys sell anything that is digital, um, that's some type of like passive income, go ahead and write it in the comments. I would love to know who here sells anything passive, digital, or anything like that. Write it in the comments. Most of my clients typically tend to have something that they're working on that is on the lower end that maybe they haven't executed enough. So go ahead and tell me in the comments below if you guys have something that is digital, lower end, something like that. The point is that you need something so you have lots of different streams of revenue. A lot of people forget this kind of thing, but if you study all the millionaires and the billionaires and the six-figure entrepreneurs of the world, they have lots of different streams of income. So I still want to hear from you guys. Who here has anything digital that they sell? Who here has something passive that they sell? Even if you haven't put it together yet, but you have thought about selling something passive or digital, write it in the comments because I want to know what you guys are thinking when it comes to trying to create low-end offers for you guys, all right? So again, low-end offers are things that don't take up a lot of your time. There's something you put time into once and then you just can sell it over and over and over again. And again, more streams of income. So that means from low to high-end packages, lots of different ranges of ways to people work with you or buy your stuff, plus selling that stuff a lot to a targeted audience means more money, okay? All right. Okay. All right. So good, Taylor. And so this is always something I've wanted to create, but as a service-based business, it's difficult for me to design. Yes, I get it. Not necessarily interested in educating other photographers. I would rather create passive income with a product for my clients. Awesome. I love it. And it's totally possible for you to create something totally passive for your clients, right? So I know as a service-based business, most of you guys are just trying to put out fires most of the time. And what I mean by that is I mean you are just trying to finish, like getting stuff edited, or you're trying to just finish um, getting back to inquiries or replies or anything like that. So I totally understand where you guys might feel as service-based 
service-based people entirely overwhelmed. But this is where service-based people kind of get tripped up in their businesses. It's because you are literally always putting out fires that you don't have time to scale your business. And scaling your business looks like selling things that are lower end that aren't taking up your time, okay? Other people have other totally different business models, right, that work for them. It might be starting an entirely different business that you're passionate and excited about but doesn't take up as much time. But I want to kind of really drill it in your heads that as a service-based business, I find it super duper important to also have products and things that you can sell that are entirely passive and they're also low income. Now, most of us also here on this live stream only work what during the wedding season. Maybe you get some fall sessions, the wedding season, but we know come like winter, those January, February months, if you're not booking deposits on weddings, you are broke, right? Like most of us are broke <laughs> during that time. So that's why it's awesome also to have a business that is only functioning six months out of the year. Now I know we have things like edit, you guys have things like you have to edit and things like that, but you have a chunk of time in your schedule when you can be creating things to scale your business, to offer lower end products, right? Like to do those things. I mean, to me, I don't know any millionaires or billionaires that say I sell three packages and that's it. I mean, maybe, okay, I don't wanna say that. Maybe there's one or two out in the world, but most of the millionaires and the billionaires I follow have so many different streams of income, it's insane. Like, and their hands are kind of in everything, right? So this is what I want you guys to think about is creating a low end product, not something you have to put time in and time out, okay? And also have your high end products. And now when I'm talking high end, when you are putting your time into something, your time is money. Time is money. Time is money. Time is money. Okay, say that with me again. Time is money. Because if you are taking your time to go and shoot this wedding, you know, you're taking, like, say you go and you take, like, eight hours out of your day to go shoot this wedding. You also edit it. Then there's the emails, the back and forth, the scheduling, the social media. I mean, it is more than just eight hours. And if you take that eight hours away, you know, you could have spent, like, three or four hours of that time creating a digital product to sell to people, right? And that could be something that's totally evergreen. All right, so I really want you guys to think about this. And if you're unsure of like, how do I even start to create that in my business? How do I even start to go about doing that? I'm offering these sessions. I'm offering a VIP private 60 minute training session. And what we do is we kind of go through your business. First, I go through your habits, your thoughts, and your beliefs around money. Also, Q&A will be right after I talk about this. Um, so I go through all your habits, your thoughts, and your beliefs around money. We kind of untangle them and see where you're thinking why you can't raise your prices or why you can't do something, all right? Then after we go through and kind of like smash all these things you have about not being worthy enough to do that, then what we do is we create your first digital product together. So we go through and I create something called a plan of action for you. We have to give something very valuable for, before you pitch people, Okay. So giving people something of value, like this webinar. This is something of value, okay, that I'm giving to my clients and I'm giving to potential clients and I'm giving to all of you guys, right? And then what I'm saying is, hey, here I, I have this thing I'm selling, but I've taken the time to put together this thing that I'm putting together and then selling you something, all right? So we could create this for you, is then we'll go through, we'll say, okay, this is your plan of action. We're gonna create, you know, a five-day challenge or an email challenge, or we're gonna create something that's like, you know, a five-minute video training or something like that on this thing. Then we're gonna sell that. We're gonna put it all together for you guys. Like, this is gonna be amazing. <laughs> it's gonna be really exciting because I love creating this stuff, right? So I have these VIP private training sessions Go through, talk about your habits, your thoughts, your beliefs around money, smash those beliefs, untangle them, get them out of here. Then we go through, create a plan of action and your first digital product together. It's amazing. I'm only offering four of them, four of them, because they're so fucking cheap, because they're so cheap. It's only $97 for 60 minutes of my time where we go through, smash your money blocks for the first 30 minutes, last 30 minutes is creating that free thing you're gonna put together and then that digital product you're gonna sell at the end of it. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right, for those, 
I'm only offering till Monday. Again, you get a plan of action, which is that freebie thing we're going to put together, and then the digital product you're going to sell. And then we kind of talk about in the beginning all of those kind of negative thoughts, habits, and beliefs you have around money. All right, guys. You have made it through till the end. Thank you so much for sticking with me. What are your questions that you have around money? Or if you have questions around the VIP private training sessions, it's 60 minutes, $97 with me, um, creating your first digital product and creating the plan of action to sell that product, go ahead and ask away. Any other questions you have around money and pricing, ask, 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 ask. And again, this is a safe space to talk about money issues. So please don't feel embarrassed. Please don't feel like your question is dumb. Please don't feel like uh, this is too like this is too much of a personal question. This is a safe space to ask any questions you have around money and pricing. If you guys don't have any questions, that's cool too. <laughs> but I'd love to hear some questions. I'm gonna take a sip of my water while I'm waiting for any questions to come in. Any questions you guys got? Okay. Again, I have only four of those VIP training sessions because they're so cheap. They're just so cheap. All right, so Taylor, she gave me a question. Yay, Taylor. What is, a, what is your advice for comparing pricing to others in your same area? Um, so I think it's, I think it makes sense um, to see what your local competition is like because they're, I mean, if you live in New York City and then if you live in the middle of Kansas, the prices are definitely different, right? Um, it's just because our incomes are all varied across the country. So I think it definitely makes sense. Do I believe you should base your honest real pricing around them? No. There's an exercise I love to do, and I did this when I raised my prices to $2,000 minimums, where I say to myself, okay, what's the lowest amount I would want to take for this product or service? Okay, and then I say, I put that here. Then I take an amount and I say, what would make me like puke and vomit, pee my pants <laughs> price? And that's up here. And right in the middle of that, is typically what I find that is the price that actually is right for me. So that price is typically one that doesn't make me feel like I'm going too far. And sometimes when you set a goal that's kind of too high or too far when you're going to sell it, it kind of feels like it just you just don't come off as confident because you kind of also think it's like kind of too crazy, right? So um, what I like to do is take that middle price because it's a price that's still pushing me out of my comfort zone. Um, but it's also a price that I know I feel confident saying to other people. Yeah, so that would be a fun exercise probably for you to do. So um, your advice would probably be like, here's the top, you know, here's someone who's charging an insane amount for photography packages in your area. And then the middle would be someone who's charging way too low for their packages. And then whatever is in the middle for you, I think would probably be a great price for you. But again, it has to feel good to you you have to feel confident about saying that price. But I also want you to feel a little uncomfortable at saying that price too, all right? I hope that answered your question. Uh, Classy or Elizabeth or anybody else who's watching, if you are watching the replay, I get a lot of replay watchers, you can feel free to type your question in the comments and I still will answer it even if we're not live. Um, so if you guys have any questions, Type them in. I'd love to hear them if they are about the VIP training sessions. Um, I can talk more about those. You're welcome, Taylor. Um, anybody else have any more? I'm going to give you guys about like one more minute, and we'll be at the full 60 minutes hour. Sorry about my. I really am so upset that my like my. I use BeLive.tv to do this Facebook Live, and I was going to put my, I have a whole webinar, I have all these fancy slides and a presentation, and it just started to freeze up when I did it through BeLive.tv. I've used them for doing Facebook Lives before, but for some reason, 
using the sharing the desktop option, they still probably haven't had that worked out in all the kinks. So I might re-record this um, with the slides and put it in here. Um, I don't know yet if I'm going to do that because this has been fine. This has worked. So we'll see. All right, guys. Um, it's 2 o'clock. I don't see any more questions. So I hope you guys have an awesome, money-hungry, filled day. You're confident with your money, and you're going after your money like a rich bitch. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Um, I have four of those VIP Smash Your Money Blocks trainings. I'll be posting about them in the group. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.